Most people don't realize this, but Homo sapiens, us, aren't the only humans to have ever existed. We're just one branch of a much larger family tree within the genus Homo, which simply means human. According to fossil records, the earliest members of this group date back roughly 2.8 million years. That estimate comes from a fragment of a lower jaw, known as LD350-1, found in Ethiopia. Even though it's far from complete, it's considered the earliest fossil confidently assigned to our genus. Scientists think it might belong to an early ancestor of either Homo habilis or Homo rudolfensis. As different species within the genus evolved, we start to see a clear trend. Over time, these early humans developed more complex traits, less ape-like and more refined, and their tool-making abilities advanced alongside them. But then came a discovery in 2015 that upended that tidy narrative. Deep inside a remote South African cave system, researchers found the remains of a species that didn't seem to fit anywhere in the expected evolutionary sequence. They called it Homo naledi. This species, strangely enough, was discovered in just one cave, Rising Star Cave, and nowhere else so far. The site is a maze of narrow tunnels and chambers so difficult to navigate that even reaching the fossils took an elite team of climbers and scientists. What they found there would spark debate around the world. Instead of a few scattered bones, they uncovered more than 1,500 fossil fragments belonging to at least 15 individuals, men, women, and children. And these weren't badly eroded or barely identifiable. They were surprisingly intact, allowing researchers to analyze their structure in detail and date them more accurately. The age? Between 335,000 and 236,000 years ago, placing them in the same time window when Homo sapiens began to emerge in Africa. But here's the twist. Homo naledi didn't look like a modern human, not even close. They had a strange combination of traits, some similar to ours, others resembling species that lived millions of years earlier. Their brains were small, their skulls more primitive, and yet they walked upright. They stood just under five feet tall and had lean, light builds perfect for moving through tight spaces, perhaps like the very cave where they were found. And so, despite being relatively recent in age, Homo naledi looks like it stepped out of a much older chapter of our evolutionary history. That's what makes them so fascinating and so puzzling. Most of the Homo naledi individuals discovered weighed under 90 pounds, around 40 kilograms, which makes them significantly smaller than modern humans by about 35%. That puts them in second place for the smallest human species we know of. First place still goes to Homo floresiensis, the so-called hobbit species that lived on an isolated Indonesian island. But in their case, small size is expected. Being confined to an island often leads to what's called insular dwarfism. What makes Homo naledi so puzzling is that they lived in mainland Africa, where you'd typically expect larger body sizes. So yeah, pretty unexpected. But size wasn't the only surprise. For anthropologists, the real head-scratcher was in their hands. Their wrists and thumbs were robust, structurally advanced, very similar to what we see in Neanderthals and modern humans. That suggests they had strong grips and could handle tools well. But then you look at their fingers and it's a whole different story. Long curved digits, more like what you'd expect from a tree dweller. These are traits we associate with much older, more primitive ancestors. Ones built for climbing. And get this, their climbing adaptations were so pronounced that some researchers argue Homo naledi may have been even better suited for tree life than earlier species like the Australopithecines, which includes the famous Lucy and Lucy's crowd were no slouches when it came to scaling trees. Add in their cone-shaped ribcage, high-set shoulders, and broad pelvis, all more primitive anatomical features, and it becomes clear. This was a species that likely spent a good amount of time off the ground. Why? Their small size may have made them more vulnerable to predators, and hanging out in trees might have offered some safety. But that doesn't mean they were limited to the canopy. In fact, their lower bodies tell a different story. Their muscular glutes, well-developed thigh bone ridges, broad kneecaps, elongated lower legs, and even the structure of their ankle bones all point to the same conclusion. 
These people walked upright and could cover serious ground. And although their hands were built for grabbing branches, their feet looked very much like ours, meaning they walked in a way that was practically identical to how we walk today. That rare combo, high-level tree climbing and fully upright walking, has sparked a lot of debate. Why evolve for both? One idea is that Homo naledi was a kind of evolutionary holdout, a species that retained older traits while also developing new ones. But there's a more practical explanation too. Around the time they lived, Southern Africa was going through a climate shift, less forest, more open savanna. So trees were fewer and more scattered. That could have forced Homo naledi to settle in one area until resources ran low, then move to another. Some scientists even think their small, agile bodies might have helped them navigate rocky terrain, possibly even making cliff faces and caves part of their home range. That could help explain why their fossils were found deep inside a hard-to-reach cave. But even with all that, being good climbers doesn't automatically mean they lived in the trees full-time. Their lives were probably more complex than that. What's even more puzzling is what wasn't found inside Rising Star Cave. Despite the number of skeletons, not a single artifact has been uncovered that would suggest people were living there. No tools, no signs of fire, nothing. That adds another layer of mystery to Homo naledi. But oddly enough, their teeth have given scientists a few more clues. Unlike most humans, Homo naledi had unusually small teeth, but those teeth had thick enamel, something we typically associate with older human ancestors. Over time, our enamel generally became thinner, but Naledi bucked that trend. Their molars were shaped more like those of very ancient species, which made them surprisingly durable. Yet many of the individuals had heavily worn down teeth, suggesting they weren't eating soft foods. And that brings us to the floor, literally. He wear patterns on their teeth suggest they were eating gritty, abrasive materials, most likely raw underground plants like tubers, which are often coated in soil and sand. It's not exactly fine dining, and it didn't do their dental health any favors. Interestingly, even though their teeth looked very different from ours, they grew and developed in a way that closely resembles modern human teeth. So once again, we're left scratching our heads about where exactly they fit in the human family tree. Here we have a species that lived not too long ago, could climb like pros, had oddly ancient teeth, walked like us, and ate rough, dirty food straight from the ground. Naturally, that leads to questions about what they were actually doing and how they thought. And that brings us to their brains, which, as you might guess, were just as unusual. Based on their small bodies, researchers expected smaller brains, but not this small. The average brain volume for Homo naledi was between 465 and 610 cubic centimeters. For comparison, that's about half the size of a modern human brain, and roughly what we'd see in a human infant just a few months old. So by all logic, you'd assume this meant they weren't especially bright. But then came a surprise. Despite the tiny size, their brains had features typically seen in more advanced humans. Their frontal lobes were shaped in a way that suggested higher level thinking. They had well-developed areas linked to sight, hearing, and even possibly speech. In short, the structure of their brain looked far more sophisticated than what you'd expect given the size. This raised a big question. Were these small-brained humans actually capable of complex behavior, maybe even language or symbolic thinking? Some scientists think so, but the frustrating part is that we still haven't found any tools or signs of culture that we can confidently connect to them, not even in the cave that holds thousands of their bones. And that's the contradiction. If they were truly advanced, where's the evidence? Still, some researchers argue that Homo naledi may have lived in the same regions as Middle Stone Age humans. The high veld area of South Africa where the cave is located does have known human artifacts from that time. So it's possible that Naledi participated in some of that cultural activity, we just haven't found the proof yet. Others go further, suggesting that Homo Naledi might have been an outlier, highly intelligent, but with a body and brain size that didn't match their cognitive capabilities. That theory stems from the discovery site itself. 
After all, if a species with such small brains was capable of intentionally entering such a dangerous cave, and possibly even placing their dead there, we might be dealing with something far more advanced than we've given them credit for. The section of Rising Star Cave where the Homo nullity fossils were found isn't just hard to reach, it's borderline extreme. Think steep drops, sheer cliffs, and tight spaces so narrow that only the slimmest explorers can squeeze through. And even then, only if they position their bodies just right. So naturally, a big question lingers. How on earth did these individuals end up in such a nearly unreachable place? One of the leading theories is that Homo naledi might have intentionally placed their dead in this cave. The idea is that they were expert climbers who knew how to navigate this underground labyrinth, even without light. And remember, even modern explorers equipped with headlamps and climbing gear find this place dangerous. If true, this wouldn't just suggest advanced motor skills, it would also imply complex social behavior. Because deliberate burial or even purposeful body disposal is a practice associated with symbolic thought and culture. And if that's what happened here, then Homo naledi would hold the title for the oldest known evidence of this kind of behavior among any human species, despite having small brains. That alone would challenge our assumptions about intelligence in early hominins. So who exactly were the Homo naledi? Honestly, that's fair. We still don't fully know. At the moment, there are four main hypotheses. The first suggests that Homo naledi split off from the main human lineage very early, maybe as far back as the Pliocene epoch, but certainly no later than 900,000 years ago. Another theory proposes that they might be the result of interbreeding between early Homo species and late Australopithecines, making them something like a hybrid species. Then there's the idea that they could be a sister group to descendants of Homo heidelbergensis, or perhaps they're more closely related to Homo erectus, given some similarities in skull shape and other features. Still, even among extinct humans, Homo nalidae stands out as particularly mysterious. And until we find more fossils, or better yet, evidence of their tools or settlements, those questions are likely to remain unanswered. But there's one thing we can say. Life wasn't easy for this species. The range of ages and sexes represented in the cave suggests that death touched every corner of their community. Many of the fossils also show signs of physical stress, particularly dental markers that point to poor nutrition during childhood. Researchers believe that extreme shifts in climate, especially harsh winters and brutal summers, put tremendous strain on their survival. Given their small frame, staying warm during cold seasons would have been especially difficult. And even today, the same region of South Africa where Homo naledi once lived is known for higher rates of illness tied to environmental stress, including respiratory infections and diarrheal diseases. It's not hard to imagine that their challenges were even greater. And if life wasn't already tough enough for Homo naledi, their small size likely made them easy targets for big predators. We're talking lions, hyenas, leopards, apex hunters that wouldn't have hesitated to go after these lightweight hominids, but strangely enough, around Rising Star Cave, there's a noticeable absence of large carnivore fossils. No, this doesn't mean Homo naledi were fending off lions like prehistoric warriors. The more likely explanation? The region was just too rugged, too harsh, and too sparse in prey to attract big predators regularly. So they hunted in more fertile nearby areas where food was easier to catch. Still, the unforgiving environment may have been their biggest threat. Rising Star Cave is the only known site where we've found their remains, and while it doesn't appear to have been the direct cause of their disappearance, the surrounding landscape might have played a key role. Harsh, unpredictable weather patterns and limited resources could have made survival, and especially migration, difficult. They may have simply been boxed in by an environment that no longer supported them. And sadly, the timeline of their existence seems to confirm that. Based on the fossils we have, Homo naledi only persisted for about 100,000 years, relatively brief by hominin standards. Not long enough to leave a broad footprint, but long enough to puzzle and fascinate us today. Still, we've only scratched the surface. 
future discoveries might reveal more about how they lived, how they thought, and what ultimately led to their end. Who knows? Maybe they were just as capable and complex as any other branch of our human family. We just haven't found the evidence yet. Click on the video on your screen to keep enjoying our content. See you in the next video.